Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Latin America show. My name is Enrique Gelista, and it's a pleasure for me to be tonight with all of you. We have prepared a fantastic show today. We have Paraguay, and we're going to talk about this fantastic country. We have two fantastic guests. We have the ambassador from Paraguay, Genaro Papalardo, and also we have Romy Martinez, that she is a fantastic and amazingly singer. So, of course, well, please stay tuned. And of course, well, I would like to ask you to share this video with all your friends, with all your relatives, and with all the people. If you are watching us right now on Facebook, please just give us a click over there. Yeah, that is says share or compartir in Spanish. It depends the version that you have. But well, of course, it's the important thing is that, well, you can, more people, they can know what the Latin American things or what the Latin American people we are doing and of course share us in all this uh, in, in in all your Facebook and of course well you can follow us in our different social networks that we have you can follow us on Twitter on Instagram uh, of course Facebook and YouTube in YouTube you can find all the previous programs all the previous countries that we have visited and well we have explained you a little bit more about them so well I would like to first that before we start the show to introduce my presenters my co-partners mis amigos Roger Larcon Hello, everyone. How are you? It's an amazing week to the, today because uh, today wasn't that it was not that hot, so it was more nicer weather. But we are so proud this program to show two amazing guests today. So stay in. Thank you very much, my dear Royer. And on the other side in London, we have Whitney Nuchereno. How are you, Whitney? Hola, muy bien. Gracias. Y tú? Um, Hello, everyone. Buena noche. Bienvenidos al programa. I look forward to discussing more about Paraguay and what makes it very different than other countries in South America. And I look forward to teaching you a little Spanish, a little slang, and even a little Guarani. So stay tuned. Excellent, my dear Winnie. So today we're going to talk not only in Spanish, also we're going to talk in Guarani, and we're going to tell you the reason why. But well, it's like, well, as I said at the beginning, we're going to talk about Paraguay. This is a fantastic country. This is the name of the, well, the name of the country in Spanish, we used to say Paraguay. I know that maybe the, the way that we are stressing some vowels in English is different, but actually it's almost the same Paraguay or Paraguay, that it could be like the proper pronunciation in Spanish. That's the way of the, the name of the country. And well, here you can see the flags. Uh, sorry, there, there, here, the flag. Well, normally I present one flag, and now why I'm presenting two flags? Well, the important thing is that Paraguay is one of the only three countries in the world that you can find that they have different charges each side. And well, the main thing is because, well, I think so only Moldova, uh, Saudi, and Saudi because they have a description, so it has to be different in order that you can read it properly. And Paraguay, they are the only countries that you can find that flag is different from one side to the other one. What is the meaning of the colors? Well, the colors you can see that it is the red one that is talking about the patriotism, the courage and the equity and justice. The white one is talking about the purity, peace and unity. And the blue one is telling us about the love, knowledge and the truth, the truth and of course the freedom. And well, also you can find in both sides, the first, first one is the coat of arms. It has a yellow star that means the independence of this country. And in, well, you can see a label that is saying República de Paraguay, that is the proper name of the country. On the other side, we'll find a lion and it has a lion uh, facing the east side and also with a liberty cap and the description that it says peace and justice. Paraguay also is very well known because, well, sometimes they call it like the heart of South America. And Paraguay is interesting because, well, the name of Paraguay, uh, if you remember in the last version, in the last show that we had talking about Chile, we're talking about the region of the name of the country. So, well, now we're going to talk about the region of Paraguay. There is no one reason what is the name. There are two two theories about what is the origin of this name. And the first one is said that it's coming from a tribe that it was living in that area, that the name is the Payagua. And also as uh, Paraguay has a river who is cut crossing all the complete country from the north to the south, of course, it's a river. So Paya, Paraguay, it would be the meaning something similar to the Payaguas River. So it could be like that. However, the version that is the one that they use most common and also the one that they are teaching in schools, it could be something that is related to the Guarani. 
Guarani is a local language that they used to talk in that area. Well, not they used to, they talk in that area. And the main meaning is coming from, or the etymology is coming from para, that means tricky. Gua, that means place, and Y, the letter Y, means water. So it could be similar to the meaning of the place with the streaky waters. And as I told you, they have a fantastic river there. Well, actually they have three main rivers that it could be the river Paraguay, Paraná, and Pilcomayo. So it's, uh, it's an interesting place because, well, Paraguay, as I told you, is very well known at the heart of South America. And it's because now we're gonna see in the map that, well, is almost in the middle of South America. So, well, Paraguay has borders with Argentina, with Brazil and Bolivia. Paraguay doesn't have ocean beaches. So you can see that, well, it doesn't have any ocean in any of the sides. However, as this river is crossing the complete country, you can have fantastic landscapes, and fantastic beaches that you can enjoy in Paraguay. So let's go to some quick facts about Paraguay. The official name is Republic of Paraguay. It has a population around 7 million people and it's split in 17 departments. The official language is the Spanish and also the Guarani that, all, that we're going to talk a little bit more about Guarani at uh, Whitney talk about that. And also we have a fantastic singer that well, Romy Martinez, she's going to tell us a little bit more about Guarani also because it's a very important language. So while well, they have two official languages in this country, the capital is Asuncion, Asuncion and it has a population around 500,000 people. And they are three main cities, Asuncion, Ciudad del Este and San Lorenzo. Also, they are, they are uh, celebrating the independence, the 15th of May, and well, they have the independence from Spain, the 15th of May of 1811. So this last May, they celebrate 209 years of independence. Uh, the currency is the Guarani also. You, you will see that it's very repetitive this part because it's very important for, for Paraguay in general. The area that they are covering is around 4,600 sorry, 406,000 400, square kilometers. So that is something around 157,000 square miles. And just to compare with other countries, I can tell you that, well, it could be like 1.6 times the UK size, or it could be a little bit bigger than Norway or Germany. And also, well, some of the different things that they are exporting to the world is soybean meals, they have soybean, so, uh, soybean oil, they have some frozen bovine meat and insulated wires and some textiles. So these are like quick facts that we can understand a little bit about Paraguay. However, in order to know more about Paraguay and to know more about what is this country, how is their economy and how is the current situation that we can enjoy and we can appreciate from this country. We have a fantastic guest tonight and we are very honored to have the ambassador in the UK, the ambassador of Paraguay in the UK. He is Genaro Papa, Papalardo. Genaro, uh, good evening. Uh, I can see that now you are on mute. Yeah, perfect. So good evening, Genaro. It's a pleasure for us to have you here in the Latin America show. How are you? Fine, fantastic. Thank you very much, Enrique. And my wish to Whitney, Roger, and Romy also. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador, for taking this time in order to talk a little bit more about Paraguay and also to know more about the economy. And also we have different topics that we would like to share with the audience. So I would like to start just like saying, how is the relationship, talking in, a economic, in an economic subject or in an economic way, how is the relationship between Paraguay and the UK? Well, it's wonderful. I, uh, for the time being, uh, besides the COVID, completely stopped it for, the, for this particular year. But we have a very important investment from British in the past, from the first period of our history. We have the railway system. It was a British in Paraguay. We have the first railway system in, in South America. We have a very good connection. It's fantastic. So I, I, this is my third year. I arrived on March 2017. It was a particular time because I arrived in the middle of the Brexit. So I have a lot of discussion about with my colleagues on the Latin American group. It was so funny but we started starting about the soft, the soft Brexit, the hard Brexit, the no deal and whatever. So now, because of the COVID, the Brexit is in the other side, in this moment. 
but I, I think it's I, 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 I am diplomat for more than 33 years, but I am a businessman inside. So I, I, I work hard about that to do more business with uh, UK in Paraguay and they are, Paraguay is a very good, we are in a good position in the economy, even in the COVID-19 uh, is affect, of course, there's, there's no any country in the world that cannot affect the COVID. And uh, starting with the health and then of course the economy. But I, uh, we are in better than other countries. I don't want to mention any of them, but there is recession in the United Kingdom. It's not a good word, but I am an optimist to do business even in the pandemic. Okay, and one of the main uh, businesses that nowadays, for example, Paraguay has, a, well, the relationship or the main business uh, between Paraguay and the UK are part of this part of rails, etc. And this yes, relationship. Yes, yeah, the railway system is part of the history. Unfortunately, we don't have any more. But now we are working more in the forestry. Also, reforestation is one of the items that the British are very keen to do investment in Paraguay. And we have a very a strong extension of, of, of land to, to plant eucalyptus. So we have, I'm working for several companies, a British company related to other companies in Europe. They are keen to invest in Paraguay. In order to, to also to for nutrition in the cattle field, because we are very good uh, uh, cattle uh, field and we export a lot of beef to the world. I number, we are number less than 10, but we are very good beef. Uh, hopefully in the, in the near future, we, we export more beef to United Kingdom. I'm working on that also. And, and, and also, uh, there's a uh, uh, maquila, I don't know if you know Enrique Maquila, it's a, it's a word uh, invented for the Mexican, but it's a fantastic uh, a, a business to, to import several things for different country, only pay 1% of the, the taxes, and you can raise for. We have a lot of investment. From, in Paraguay, from Asia, from Europe, from even from our, our region. So I, I'm working on that also. But besides that, many things to export our uh, rum, our export our uh, more beef, more uh, uh, traditional traditional food, traditional uh, cotton of Paraguay, whatever. I, I, I never stopped to work on that. So I think that there are a lot of opportunities, but I think uh, uh, it's not the proper time to do business because of the pandemic. We have to wait a little bit more time. I think uh, uh, we have to follow the instruction of the people are, uh, the scientists to, 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 to offer to the government. They say we have to prepare to probably more than a year. So it's, it's particular time to think. Yeah, and also well is to think and well, maybe just to, reset or uh, it, it ch changing our mindset about what are the different uh, opportunities yeah. or difficulties exactly. that we can have, yeah? Exactly, uh, I agree And, and in that India. matter, because you were talking about the COVID and all this, how is the current situation in Paraguay about COVID? We know about many countries, but what is the, the, the current one? Well, Paraguay, we have a very, very good shape. We, are, we don't have a very good number. One. At the time we have only 145. I mean, one, 45, I'm very sad for that. But it's a 7 million people, it's very low, low, low numbers. Why? Because the government did a very good job. They, they closed in the beginning all the frontiers. No, any people can travel from Argentina, Brazil, or whatever. And besides that, uh, we control the, the virus. We control the virus. Even we have some sort of, of uh, health, but they did very well. We are fine. I think we are fine, but uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the whole will come again, probably as, as same in the United Kingdom. We have to prepare for that. And talking about the COVID, if you let me allow for to, to think about, well, so this is a particular year for me, my wife, my family, because the lockdown was so long, was so long. I, 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 my first time in my life, 85 days being at home, Leaving, not leaving the house. So I, I read a lot of books. I have a lot of books pending to, to read it. And I listen to a lot of music and I think a lot of myself and also about the, the, the people outside. 
it's a, it changed the, the way we think. It's a very, uh, I think it's a positive time because we, we, we will get back to the, to the future, as I mentioned. We have to go back to the future because I, we have to think differently that the health affect the, the economy. I, in the beginning, I didn't get about that, the, the, the proportion of the health affect the economy and the economy affect all the, all the world and now we start in recession. So many people without job is very sad. It's very sad and, and it is happened in several countries in, in, in Europe. And I work in, in London, I see a lot of people on the street. So it's very sad, it's very sad. So I think it, uh, we have a lot of lessons from this pandemic to think more about the human being. Yeah, and, and, and also it's like, uh, sorry, right. And yeah, uh, talking about all these being 85 days at home, <laughs> how, how, how you can, for example, the embassy can, obviously a lot of embassies are running, but tell us about obviously all the events, they went reprogrammed. Tell us a bit how the embassy is coping with all that. Well, it was a part of the summertime. It arrived very early. So uh, all the official uh, engagement that they are getting to the Buckingham Palace was canceled. The, the ascot and the, the troop in the colors and probably the, the, the banquet at the end of the year was canceled uh, at the time. So no more meetings about diplomatic community, no more uh, national days. And now uh, it was uh, the, probably um, more than 60 days that and then we restart about this particular fantastic thing that is Zoom. So we get back to our region in our Grula to do uh, our meetings in a Zoom conference. So I think this is something very important. Probably in the future, we can do that. It was more easy. You don't need to go by car so some place. You can be at your, your, your embassy. You can be at your home. And you, you can do your business in one or two hours and finish. This is something very important. So, but I, but I restart to work in the embassy on the June 1st. It was so particular because I had to wash hands all the time, clean everything, the computer, whatever. And, and I, uh, it's a new reality, new reality. But I, I understood that, that we can work at home. We don't need to go to the office. It's really, yeah, I, I and, love to go to the office, but <laughs> yes, Enrique, tell me. No, and, and actually, I think so that, well, it's like, and I would like just to engage this part, like, well, for example, now with all this uh, COVID and everything, what are like the main activities that the embassy is like dealing with or, because I would like to know more about the different activities that the embassy of Paraguay nowadays they are doing, and normally they are doing in a cultural way, in a business yeah. way, how you are supporting other companies that maybe they would like to start having relationships between UK and Paraguay for all these uh, businesses that they could rise nowadays. Yes, uh, the, the culture is part of my passion. The culture is my passion. I, I love the music. I, I want to mention something that London is part of my dreams. After 30 years, I got the post and I'm very happy. It's a wonderful country the history, the people, the music, the Beatles, 1960. <laughs> so this is wonderful. So I am very close to the music and also Romy is, 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 is with, with us tonight. And we have a very good concert on the Royal uh, Holloway uh, University. And I, I had to postpone several uh, concert this year for the COVID, but I, I th three concerts. So I planning to do the 2021 it will invite you, of course, to be part of the, the, the well, music of Paraguay different. We have a very good musician where well, Romy is one of the best singers. And we have a lot of uh, in, in, in folk music and pop music and, and modern music, whatever. We have a very, very good musician. And also we have a film industry. We have a very good uh, film from Paraguay. I don't know if you are aware about that. And also, uh, uh, Poetry. We have uh, writers. We have uh, some people. Out. I'm intending to bring someone from the opera, the first opera of Guarani, and and for next year hopefully. So, art is fantastic. Music is fantastic. So we postponed the 2021, and I will invite you to come and 
stay with us. And how, oh, oh well, what are the main challenges that you can see now? Well, we're, we're talking about COVID, we're talking about, like, of course, everything is changing nowadays, and you were saying that, well, a lot of things they could be now be done using Zoom or these kind of platforms, and nowadays we can talk and we can do, but what are the main challenges that now, for example, the embassy here uh, is, is dealing with, or what are the main challenges that you have to face? I didn't expect that kind of question. Very difficult to answer. <laughs> but first of all, I think we, have, we must survive first. <laughs> we must survive first. We take care of, you know, taking uh, care of, of our the health is very important. And, and I, uh, to be uh, to control the distance and everything. But I continue to do the same, even that, as the COVID is here, uh, because I, I follow my, 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 my job, I, my, my dreams a lot of things we want to do. I think we can do many things and I'm working on that. So I, I, um, the COVID will finish soon. It will be part of the history. It is the, the third world. I think it is the third world. A lot of people die in the, in the world. So we have to change our mind, the way of think and the future will be much better. And in, in that way, uh, um, um, Ambassador, it's like um, if, and this is going to be a little bit more personal in that way. How would you invite our audience in order to visit any particular place in Paraguay that you can say, this is my favorite place in Paraguay that if you are planning to visit, please don't miss it. I know that maybe they are a lot, but the, 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 your favorite one in Paraguay that you would say, please don't miss this place if you have the opportunity to visit Paraguay. I am the man of the night. I will start with a, a disco. It, the name is Zulu. It's in the, the, the top of one of the main buildings in Paraguay, and you can dance there. It's have a beautiful view of the city. Don't miss Zulu. I will prepare a visit to Paraguay for that. And also, I, I well, a lot of good restaurants. We have a very restaurant in the, the top. About you know, you know about our beef. We have a very good uh, so uh, fish. Our surubi, a lot of uh, ten restaurant I can recommend to go. It's, it's fantastic, and also a uh, oh, ah, this is <laughs> okay, okay, fantastic. This is fantastic. Yes, the cathedral, cathedral. Yes, yes, the hotels. In Paraguay, so it's a beautiful country. The people are. Seven million people that are warm, very close, very open. The people like the foreign people, they are very open to receive and very easy to do business and friendship. Okay, so well, that thing so that while we, are, of course, I already put in my notes that well, Sulu <laughs> is a good place Sulu. to go. Yeah, a good club to go there. And also, well, of course, I think so that well, having a, a fantastic view of far away, I think so it could be like a, a very good experience. And also, well, I have seen that, well, you have a, uh, in Paraguay fantastic landscapes. And well, I was reading a lot about the beaches that you have that also is yeah. like something interesting because, well, even you don't have an, any ocean that you can say, well, this is a particular beach with an ocean. You have a very good places to visit and also people, they can relax and chill out in Paraguay and enjoying this kind of fantastic weather that you have there. And also it's like a like a normal beach that everybody can enjoy there with a fantastic food and of course well with fantastic people and learning a little bit of Guarani. Did you speak Guarani, Ambassador? A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell us something like hello no, or something? No, like no, that? the Roja y Hu. Roja y Hu. Roja y Hu is the phrase the expression to say a woman you love. I love you. Roja y Hu. Okay. See, if you say that for um, a beautiful girl in Paraguay, you may say, okay, where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I took note about that one. Of course, yes, just, just have it here. No, and you never know when I'm going to use it. Embassy. Come to the and, embassy, uh, we'll be a more thing. <laughs> okay, I, I will visit you. <laughs> sure, sure, and, sure, with pleasure, with pleasure. You and, and also with these images. With me, of course. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> and also with these fantastic images of Paraguay, it's just yeah. amazing, the landscapes. is also for the audience, for the British audience, or for, or for the rest of the world, is a place, an amazing place. And if you want to uh, know more about Paraguay, you can... Um, be close to the embassies and ask for information because it's an amazing place. Yes. Too.
Yeah. Yes. Uh, talking about the 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 the, 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 the lake, Ipacaray Lake is uh, fantastic. It's uh, the most romantic place in, in Paraguay. San Bernardino. It's only 30 yeah. minutes from the capital, and you have the lake that. And is it all the people during the, the summertime? I mean, the vacation, January, February. All the people move to San Bernardino. It's a beautiful city, very small, and it's very nice. So uh, we don't have the, the sea, but we have a very nice lake, very romantic lake. Okay, so well, with the with the lake and Roja y Hu, I think so we are <laughs> done, no? <laughs> the basics for being in Paraguay, I think so. Exactly, Good. exactly. <laughs> and is there any particular season that you would recommend to visit Paraguay? Oh, uh, summertime. Summertime, summertime, sum, sum, summertime in South America. Summertime in Paraguay, mm -hmm. which is very hot, uh, very hot. It's really very hot, but it's very nice. January and February is fantastic, very fantastic. January and February, after, after Christmas. So but it, it, our winter is very light, very light. The people are, is, is scared about to have a 14 degrees. It's nothing for us. Okay. But being in Paraguay, being about 30 or 40 degrees sometime, it's too hot. <laughs> But it's nice. Some in January and February, the best season. Perfect. So well. Okay. So I'm now you know. Yeah. Now you know. Mm -hmm. Ipacara yeah. Lake in January and February, <laughs> and yes. Rojaiku, and of course Sulu. <laughs> we cannot. No, we cannot I, I, miss. Please visit Sulu. me at the embassy. I'll organize everything for you and your 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 show. We oh well, that, that's right. perfect. Don't. Okay. So well, it's like I'm going, yeah. Well, I have just the highlights here, just to present to the embassy and to tell them. Okay, I just want yeah. this one. So well, you can support me. <laughs> we'll we'll greet you as a first. People, okay, don't worry, it will be very important. The people in Paraguay is amazing, and not for my country. The people are very nice, very nice, very open, very, all the people smiling, uh, fun, parties, and you know, very nice people. You will love it. Well, I'm pretty sure we will. And thank you very much. And so I know that you have another duties. No, thank you very uh, so much. Thank Enrique. you very much for your time. I would really appreciate that you took this time in order to talk for our audience and of course to know in a little bit more about uh, Paraguay. Thank you very much, Enrique, Roger, and Whitney. Thank you very much. Ambassador. Thank you. It was my thank pleasure you. to be in your, your uh, show. Yeah, and we'll see you uh, in Paraguay. <laughs> see you in Paraguay. No, see you in London and then in Paraguay. We'll yeah, exactly. Yeah. Paraguay, it's going to be like yeah. a charter. Yes. It's going to be like a charter. So, well, from here, we're going all of us there. Yeah. <laughs> Ambassador, it's, it has been a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much. No, yes, thank, thank you very you much so to much. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I thank hope so. You enjoy this, this time. Enjoy with very us. much. Enjoy very much. Thank you, Roger. You're a close friend of the embassy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Enrique. <laughs> Thank you, Whitney. See you soon. Thank, Thank you very you, much, Thank you, Thank Ambassador. You so much. Yeah. Well, he is the Ambassador of Paraguay, uh, Genaro Papalardo. And well, as, as you can see, well, it was a pleasure. And also, well, you can you can feel now how is the Latin American spirit and also how people they could be. And also, it's very friendly. And well, of course, put in your list Paraguay as a place to visit. Um, well, uh, I think so. We have our second guest. Um, so it's like a uh, Roger, I think so. Over you first. Yeah. Well, our next guest, she's Romy Martinez. She's a singer, vocal coach, ethnomusicologist. Her background is set between Paraguay, Brazil, and Argentina. She speaks Spanish, Portuguese, English, and of course, Orni, the second official language of Paraguay. She develops musical and research projects in those three countries. She's a founder of Pura Hey Trio. I hope so, yeah, I pronounced it very correctly. And also she is an uh, undergrad undergraduate of music education, a master degree in Latin American integration, and a doctoral research for music in the Royal Holloway University. Please welcome to Romy Martinez. Hello, Romy. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me here um, tonight. It's a pleasure for me to be sharing about my country. 
Well, I think so that it's a pleasure for us also because um, I think so as well. You have an amazing background and also what well, you know very well about music. I know that Latin music always is like something that people, they are very interested. And I think so you have a lot of things to tell us about it. So, mm -hmm. um, and well, I don't know, Roger, if you like to start over you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Romy, thank you very much for being in the show. And tell us about, uh, we know, we've been in these three countries, but tell us about the story as an artist, how everything starts. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'll try to be very brief in my answers, but um, um, yeah, I, I was born in Ciudad del Este, which is a border city with uh, Brazil and Argentina. So I think that has had a, a massive influence in my musical choices. Um, so I started singing Paraguayan music, classical music as well in a choir. And well, by the time that I was supposed to choose a career, uh, music has always been a part of my life. I sang through all, ever since childhood, I think, yeah, um, in a choir for many years. And, and well, and then I, um, uh, I moved to Brazil because by that time we didn't have a, a faculty of music in Paraguay yet. So um, I moved uh, to Florianópolis, which is um, an, an island in the south of Brazil. And I, I fell in love, sort of fell in love with Brazilian music, but uh, um, it was uh, currently people would, would uh, ask me to sing Paraguayan songs because they didn't knew much about Paraguayan culture. I actually, not many of them would even know that we have a second official language and such. And so, and then I joined a group where they would sing uh, Latin American music from Peru, Bolivia, other, including other Latin American countries as well. And then I moved to Buenos Aires and this experience was quite revealing because uh, I was studying in uh, Paraguay, um, Argentinian popular music. And we would study the Argentinian music by regions. So for example, we would study Cuyo, which is a region that shares a border with Chile. And then we would study the similarities between both countries. And then when we got to study the, 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 um, the, the littoral region, they call it littoral, uh, which is the region that shares a border with Paraguay, it was like sort of, this is it, you know? It was like, uh, I had like my Eureka moment, like when you find the scientific formula for something, um, because uh, I found that there are so many um, uh, cultural features that, that Paraguay, Brazil and Argentina, uh, and Argentina shares. And not only in the music, but in the history, in the geography, and, and, and yeah, that is actually what, what led me to choose the career as an ethnomusicologist as well. And, and that took me uh, to the UK later on, if I can. And well, <laughs> I know you have a, obviously a, um, a PhD and all your research, but you went back to, to Paraguay and to seeing the Warani. Tell us a little bit about, uh, about all that, how that happens after you find all these affinities with the music in these countries and then you went to say Paraguay. You mean going back to Paraguay physically or? No, 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 uh, studying Paraguay again and then uh, obviously singing in oh. Guarani. Okay, yeah, um, so it's, it's, it's kind of a contradictory because um, in a way um, uh, I think that it's a very, uh, I'm very uh, blessed to be having this experience because I think that from far away you you have a clearer notion of your country and 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 the differences and the similarities and so uh, it's 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 curious because um, I always say this uh, I um, I've written about this actually because 
for me, uh, even though I speak English, for example, I can, uh, it, I can, I, I have the, the habit of praying. I, I maintain that. And so I cannot, I just cannot pray in English. It's, it's just, there is a very special connection with Spanish and with, in, with the Guarani because I, I speak Guarani with my grandmother until now. So I, 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 find, I find that language is, sort of, is such an important source of identity and even like the things that you want to say that you feel it's so much more ex expressive when you say it in 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 in, in, in Guarani especially, and and also one thing that I, I I think this is part of of saying how blessing this experience is, because uh, I know I have noticed that for English speakers even when the when they don't understand a word and you can you can we try to translate, but of course you can, you just music, you just have to sing it and, and play it. And, and hopefully people will, will, will receive it. And, and it's always such a beautiful surprise to see how people, to perceive how people, even when they can understand Guarani, it, it goes directly to the heart of the people. It's, it's very, very special. Yeah, it was an amazing experience on the Holloway University because obviously you have a crowd of, of English speakers. And I was so surprised just to see you singing so beautiful in Warani and, and you captivate everyone. And during this, uh, which is the response of young people to the music sung in Warani? Well, I think in... in there is a, there are differences uh, it depends on for example i have noticed that in the cities in the capital in asuncion or in the big cities in paraguay i think that people are much less aware of the value of of being a bilingual country and um, but i think it, the the um, the guarani and the bilingual songs are much more alive in the countryside of Paraguay. Um, so that is when I, I uh, my answer, this part of my answer refers to how people in Paraguay perceive it. Um, but abroad, it's people are receiving in a much open, open way. And I always notice that then when Paraguayans notice, this, notice that it's such a special language and it's such a special way of expressing the, the song of a country, then they go, oh, wow, it's like, this is special. And so, uh, so I think that, that uh, it's, it's very good to have this exchange actually that we are having, you know, and I'm, I'm happy to be sharing about it with people in my social media as well, especially Paraguayans and also for, for um, because they are always commenting. And so in general, I would say there's a very, very positive response to Paraguayan popular music, yes. Wow, that's amazing. And we have a surprise around there, no, Enrique? She, you told me the surprise. Well, yes, of course. And well, uh, Romy, well, she was telling us before that, well, it's like, well, you were telling us about how amazing is the Guarani and also how can you feel, uh, and also people that they are from other countries, they can enjoy this kind of language because, well, this is not, it's not only the words, it's more like the feeling that you have when somebody is listening and is receiving that kind of, maybe sometimes we cannot, um, translate the words because we don't know the, the language, but we can feel it. And I think so that well, we were talking and well, it's like, I think so that well, it's like, you're a fantastic singer. We have listened to you before. So I think so, I don't know if you can sing us a little bit, you know, that the audience, they can listen something and also something special. And I will let you to introduce yourself with this, with this song that you are going to tell us uh, what you're going to sing us yeah so please from me okay 
I'm more than happy to do so. Um, so this song is called Nya Naramboja, which means our pillow. And it's very delicate poetry with the poetry was written by Felix Fernandez. And, and the story that he tells is that, um, unfortunately she is gone, a woman that he loves very much. And so he compares the, the pillow because he says that it's, it's, it's almost like the, the pillow uh, uh, reminds and, and has a memory of the shape of her head on the pillow. So, uh, so the shape of her head is still on the pillow, like he tried to leave it there. And, and, and he starts to have sort of many, many different ideas that it looks like a nest. And then the birds are flying around it and the, that he, uh, he hoped that, that all these things that lovely thoughts that he is having about her will hopefully be, bring her back. And so um, I will sing it uh, just my voice as myself. So it sounds like Jai Kovea Ja, Ja Joy Hukhawa Nia Karenda Wei Meva Koi Jeru Tiru Pai Shalp Koemi Puharevo Vente Vai Shashreno Haja pajere shanyo petei Embe ije wai nyen kahe ju Bute pendere ra shere ra ruvai Derem bia po kwea de Jesus Hanga pore that's it. It's like <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. 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 It, it okay, so incredible. just incredible. Yeah, exactly. So for all your our audience, imagine that while well, it was with no music, it was only her. Imagine listening her. Live, nice. so of course it's like a, a fantastic voice, and also well with music and everything. It sounds like also it's like just terrific. So now I think so that uh, well, but if, if if our audience they would like to know more, how can they find more information about you, Romy, oh, and thank more? You. Yes, thank because I think so. Time. Now they will they will love it, and maybe mm -hmm. because also as you said, you are not only singing in Guarani, you are singing in in, in Portuguese. In Spanish, so well, it's like uh, you have a lot of uh, diverse languages that while well, you're singing. So, well, where where our audience they can find more about you? So it's uh, I have my web my website, which is Romy Martinez, Romy R O M Y, uh, Martinez with said on the end. dot com. Very simple. Can go there, and they will uh, be able to find. Uh, the two albums that I have recorded with this um, trio that you have mentioned, Pura Hey Trio. And also I have part of my research there. So I'm more than happy to also be sharing with other musicians who are interested of, on reading or, or not even musicians, people who just want to get to know more about uh, the music from this uh, country. So it's everything there. I tried to make it as organized as possible so that can be pe people can easily find um, music research whatever they want to read or look for or listen to well i, I already put the the link where people are and also also whitney i can see that, well. that whitney, yeah. Uh, yeah okay <laughs> both of us we put your website in the commentary section and while i have people as well as jenny marcella she's saying beautiful music uh over the Andes, beautiful. Gary Dancy is saying beautiful. 
And also, well, I would like to appreciate that. Well, also Yvonne Velasquez, she's like uh, watching us. She's saying hola from Wanset Park. It's London to the team and the wonderful guests. Great no, great insight into Paraguay. <laughs> Thank you very much also for Nicola, Nicolas Leakes, who is uh, watching us over there and to say the mother tongue language is so linked to our culture and hearts. Thank you very much. Gary Vancey is saying sounds a great place, interesting interview. Um, of course, well, we have uh, Roger Garcia de Leon, Lily Martinez, Advijit, who is sending us good evening team and he's sending greetings to all the team. So, well, feel free, uh, everyone who is watching us to put your commentaries here. Of course, if you want to know more about different countries, if you want to know more about the Latin America show, or if you just want to give us just of your insights and maybe if you would like to participate with us and come to the show because you have some interesting from Latin America that you would like to share. So, well, she is uh, Romy Martinez, as you can listen. She's a fantastic singer. And also, well, she's a, she, she has done a lot of research because also I know that Romy, you have been in different conferences and everything you have provided, workshops, etc. So I think that in the website, you can find a lot of information about her. Uh, and I think she's very interesting, all the research that she has done during her PhD here in London. And not, not only that, it's just keep keep the link, keep the uh, this website because obviously next year, as the ambassador said, it's going to be more more uh, concerts. So it's going to be amazing to hear one of these concerts. Believe me, I've done it in the past and it was stunning. And of course, Romy, you have to come to tell us when you will have a concert here in London in order to invite all our audience and they can go and they can of course, get just fascinated with your amazing voice. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for, for this opportunity to be sharing about all this with you. And, and yes, of course, I will be most uh, um, happy to share about the next concerts. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Yeah, and also I think so we're going to make a special show with different kind of music from Latin America. And of course, well, I hope so that you can join us to tell us a little bit because, well, you know, the background of not only Paraguay, you have the background of different cultures and the mix of them. So I think so it could be very interesting just to understand the different rhythm, rhythms, the popular music and what are the similarities and what are the differences between all of them. So thank you very much, Romy. And thank you. Thank you as well. Thank you. Thank and you please stay, stay, stay yeah, to hear. Yeah, uh, the, 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 yeah. Stay to hear. yeah exactly. Don't, don't go because now <laughs> we have another section and we have the section of Spanish, the Spanish lesson with our friend Whitney Nuchereno. Hello, Whitney. Okay. Hi, how are you? I hope you're all as well. Um, thank you again for joining me in making Spanish simple. So it's funny when I was prepping this, I thought, oh, we'll mention Guarani like in passing. Um, and we actually talked a lot about it, but just to give you a little bit more of like a history and, and how it's used today, like outside of music, as you know, it's um, the second, well, one of the two official languages of Paraguay and it's the main indigenous language. And it's not just spoken in Paraguay, but parts of, and these are the countries that Enrique was talking about on the map. Argentina, Bolivia, and parts of Brazil, just parts. And of course, they're the countries that border Paraguay. So it makes the most sense that, of course, the language would infiltrate into parts of those countries. And um, although both Guayani and Spanish have been listed as two official languages since the constitution of 1992, it has taken over 20 years to be considered a true official language. And this shows the importance of the language and how it has survived given the many barriers it's faced. And then just a little bit more facts. Um, part of the reason it's taken so long to recognize Guarani as a second official language is due to the fact that it's really, it's an oral language and a lot of people you might like keep, be able to hear it and, and, and speak it and understand it. But not many people, not as many people who speak it are able to read and write in the language. And that is changing, for example, and all this information came out pre-COVID, so COVID might delay it a little bit, but apparently next year, the first Guarani dictionary will be published. Additionally, all legislative, executive, and judicial documents will be published in both Spanish and Guarani. It was initially just Spanish. And um, because of this, uh, the state is trying to promote um, and make it more visible, the language. 
And out of the 7 million inhabitants of Paraguay, around 6 million speak or at least understand Guarani. And then from those neighboring countries, another 2 million. So you have around 8 million um, inhabitants total. And this is from info of a year or two ago. So when visiting Paraguay, you could easily potentially see, um, definitely hear Guarani in markets, shops, restaurants, TV, and of course we talked about music. Um, so just so you know some of the differences between Spanish and Guarani, it's not like Spanish and Italian or Spanish and French. We're not comparing romance languages. This is apples to oranges. It's very, very different. And um, before I show you two expressions, full disclosure, I am not a Guarani speaker. So <laughs> I apologize in advance, but a simple sentence, like if you look um, up here, um, hola, como estas? Uh, which as we've learned from many episodes ago, it means, hello, how are you? Um, is a care pare. Um, so again, hola, como estas? Care pare. And then if you want to respond, bien y tú, like I'm good, how about you? So bien y tú, uh, y cabe de no. Uh, so again, bien y tú, y cabe de no. So again, it's very different the way it's written, pronounced, even to the point of punctuation, they don't have the upside down. So it's very, very different. And that's just to give you a taste of Guarani. But as this is a Spanish segment, we're gonna move on to some Spanish vocabulary words that are related more um, to our second guest, um, Rami. And I decided we would make the theme about music. So we've learned in previous episode that, episodes that la musica is music. And you can repeat after me at home, la musica. And because we're talking about primarily Paraguay, although we've talked about hints of um, different languages and styles of music, uh, you would say la musica paraguaya. La musica paraguaya. And then of course a musician is el musico for male. We've talked about gender and then la musica for female, la musica. Uh, and then of course uh, we have this lovely word, <laughs> la etnomusicología. La Ethnomusicología, which is ethnomusicology, and it's um, the study of music and cultures. And if you break it down linguistically, the first part of the word comes from the word um, la etnia, which is ethnicity. And then, of course, we have musicología. So la etnomusicología um, is uh, ethnomusicology, and someone who is an ethnomusicologist is etno, eh, etnomusicologo or etnomusicologa, depending on male or female again. So again, la etnomusicologia, uh, and then the person, the ethnomusicologist would be etnomusic, eh, etnomusicologo or etnomusicologa. And then last few vocab words pertaining to music, not all of them were discussed today, but you know, you, when you teach one and something else is kind of similar, you want to teach the other, it's a teacher thing, <laughs> is la banda, which is a band. Um, a music group would be a grupo, a grupo musical. Um, so it could be singers. Um, you have an orchestra, obviously, um, as well. And then el compositor or la compositora is someone who writes music, composes music. And then like, Rami, you have el, or in this case, la cantante. So el cantante, kind of like the movie, or la cantante is a singer. And of course, I'm sure you can guess, cantar is to sing. So Rami canta muy bien, we would say, <laughs> fenomenal. And then a song is una, or I put la, but una canción, a song, la canción is song. Um, and then lyrics, we talked about that with the different languages that we talk about, um, la letra which is a word that is singular for us, or plural for English, sorry, other way around, and singular in Spanish-speaking countries, you normally just say la letra. And then un album, we like these words, they're cognates, they look just like they mean in English. And then un éxito, so this comes from an expression thin ed éxito, which means to be successful, so, or, in this case, uh, a success is like a hit. So un éxito would be a hit song, something that's very popular. And then finally we have una gira, and that's a tour, like a singing or could even be related to like dance um, tour. I remember when we have a G before an I, it makes an H sound, a H sound, a G before an 
E or an I. In this case, it'd be una gira. So that's some vocab related to what we talked about tonight. Not all, but just a little bit. And then now we have your <laughs> final <laughs> and favorite <laughs> um, section, which is heard on the street, like they say in timeout. These are some expressions you might hear on the street. So one of them, the first one is not one you really want to hear. <laughs> um, jacket means look out. And generally, if you hear it, you're, it means you could potentially be in danger or someone around you. Um, maybe, maybe not. Tone is everything. Situation is everything, of course. Um, but that's one that you definitely want to be able to recognize <laughs> when you go there. And then guapo or guapa. Okay, so a lot of people know that guapo and guapa is good looking. And it is, right? Like, hola guapa, que tal, hola guapo. Um, however, in slang, it can also mean um, trabajador or trabajadora, which is hardworking. So it, uh, obviously context is everything, particularly with this word. And then we've talked about a billion ways to say cool um, in Spanish and different countries like bacán, bacán, um, chévere, guay. And you can say purete, which is cool. It can also mean no hay problema, no problem. So purete, add that on the list of another way to say cool in Spanish. And then finally, okay, tranquilopa. So this is a combination of, again, the two official languages. Um, tranquilo, the first part comes from Spanish and it means like, if, you, if someone says tranquilo, it means like, okay, calm down, don't worry about it. And then um, the word pa, from Guarani means everything. So it translates into everything's okay, or just don't worry, calm, like be calm, be calm and carry on kind of like we say um, in um, here in Great Britain. And then yohora. Okay, so this is a mix and it's essentially a mix of Guarani and Spanish and it could be more common in younger generations and something that's similar that, that our audience might know a little bit more about that, that um, you can relate this to is Spanglish, which is the fusion of Spanish and English, particularly um, with Latin families living in the US. And by the way, I'm gonna go on a slight tangent. If this is something that interests you, I read this during my senior seminar in college, so not too long ago, I suggest to you the book, Se Habla Español, um, which is uh, Voces Latinas in el USA, which explores dual identity and um, while living in the US as immigrants and the effect it has on the Spanish language, hence Spanglish. And you have some terms in here too. So that's kind of something that's in, that could be similar to yo para. And then the last two words are slang in Guarani. We talk so much about Guarani, I have to give you some slang. Um, given the recent heat wave in London, <laughs> I thought aku would be perfect. And that means hace calor, it's hot out. And then the last one, and I might need some help pronouncing this one, but I believe it's at, at and that means goodbye. Again, I'm not a Guarani speaker. Um, and that's a way to say goodbye amongst um, people who know each other. So friends and family. And when I say goodbye, I mean goodbye the Spanish way. Like I'll see you really soon, not adios, goodbye. Just more nos vemos or hasta luego. So that concludes tonight's segment of Making Spanish Simple. For more information um, about culture, language, please subscribe to my website, makingspanishsimple.com, where you have access to my YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. All right. Thank you very much, my dear Whitney. And, uh, and, and Romy, there are another words that maybe in slang we use it, or something that you use it in, in, in Paraguay that they are like very, particular or something that maybe we are missing? May I say, may I, um, of course, I, I would, uh, I would say the mum guarani. Uh, so it's like a normal that, well, they... Baeshapa, Baeshapa, mm -hmm. it's, 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 a, it's, a, um, it's a short way of asking, how are you? Baeshapa. Yeah. That that's true. I only used one way to say it. Yeah, I'm sure there are many ways. Just like in Spanish, there are many People ways to say, say that. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. just for the word that I, I just remembered a very funny story actually because you mentioned shake, and I, I thought it would be it would be. 
fun to tell it because when I was living in Brazil, the first year that I moved, I remember I went to a concert and then, and then we uh, a, a, a friend of mine would would ride me back home and I would sit I, I, I was sitting in the in the back seat of the car. And then they were talking, talking. He was, he was, he was, um, uh, he was going backwards with the with the with the car, and he mm-hmm. he, he didn't he didn't see that there was a um, how do you say I'm missing this word like the the um, like a meter or a cone or a, like with the light the, like with the light uh, the light traffic light yeah or the yeah the street light street light yeah the street light yeah. so. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, hey, see you, okay, guys, see you guys, see you guys. And I was like, shake it, shake it, yeah. And then, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, you could use it for like cuidado as well. Absolutely. Well, but then from what I read. It was so yeah. funny. It was so funny because they were like, how on earth would you, would you think with this word? You don't know what shake means. You could have, you know, you could avoid an accident <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so and, and I think that that is very, very, very real because it's like mm-hmm. as as you were saying when you were praying, that yeah. you said that you were praying in warning. It's like this kind of sensation that you is your your unconscious or it's like just coming. The first thing that you want to say, I even just, they don't speak the language, you were saying that one, mm-hmm. and you say, well, and what does that mean? No. <laughs> And oh yeah, that one's Guarani too. Yes, yes, yes. I I do remember that. Oh, yeah. very <laughs> useful to know shake whenever yeah. I went when face yeah, shake. Do pay attention to that because yeah, that was so funny. I couldn't say cuidado. I do, just <laughs> yeah, I just came to your shake. mind like the first one. It was shake, mm-hmm. shake. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I'm yeah, cold. yeah. No, I did. I never heard that word because, you know, obviously I don't speak Guarani, but I just thought that was so interesting. And they said, this is not a word you really want to hear. And I thought, okay, so it's kind of like ten cuidado or if it's more of a dangerous thing, what would you say, like aguas or something? So I think it just depends again. Yeah, exactly. Watch out, aguas. So, yeah. 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 That that, that aguas is uh, is like a Mexican as well. Aguas, aguas. I know. (laughs) Aguas, yeah. Yeah, but but I think it's like, as you were saying, Romy, I think it's like sometimes we are like talking in our native language because it's the way that we feel it. And and now Mm -hmm. I think so that your friends perfectly know the meaning of shaki now. (laughs) Yeah, they they will never forget that one. I think so. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And there is pura hey as well, which is a beautiful word. Pura hey means song. Mm-hmm. And and par and and Guarani is a very is a very particular so, uh, uh, language because it's a a polysynthetic. I don't know if it's the same word, uh, but basically the words are formed with uh, with uh, syllab syllables syllables mm-hmm. of, of S- syllables. Yeah. So, so mm-hmm. for example, uh, uh, pura he it's with mm-hmm. so pu it's sound it's only sound. Mm-hmm. Pu means sound. Pura, when you put ra after after a ver a, a, a um, subject sujeto. Yep. Yep. Subject. Uh, it means that it generates something, like it it creates mm-hmm. something. Okay. And hey, and hey is is the the ex- expressing feelings with words. It's it's not expressing feelings with the body. It's specifically mm-hmm. related to the expression of feelings with 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 the sound and with the voice. So pura hey, basically, if you, it, it means song. People just say song, right. but if you if you se- separate the syllables, it's it's mm-hmm. kind of sounds that creates the expression of spoken feelings. Okay. Oh wow, that's that makes, pretty nice that because sense. it's very yeah. poetic and everything yeah. in the way that they are saying. It's not just like a word; it's just like a complete expression with a word. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and so many the... many works, many many words are are uh, constructed in that way. So the meaning is more like deep in that way that well people they will feel it more and maybe that's the reason why you were saying that some of these songs we can feel them because also it has more like a insight from the person and it's not just like a mix of words together or the lyrics yeah it's almost like saying there are words that you are saying the same thing two times for example 
uhata means ice, where u is water, and hata is hard. So uh, uh, hard water, mm -hmm. it's, it's ice, so it's in hata. So mm -hmm. it's, the words has almost like a translation of, of, what, of what the words means. Yeah. Oh, well, that's very interesting. And also it's really nice that, well, they have like a very strong relationship with the languages. So there's a, a complete mixture of languages. Like, for example, the expression that you said is not like a normal expression, but you use it. So it's not in Spanish, but you use it as a normal expression because it's in Guarani. So you have mixing languages when you are talking. And also while the ambassador uh, teaches the Roja y Ju, you know, that is like, a, of course, a very romantic. I don't know, maybe my pronunciation is a little bit bad, but what it was like, a, how how do you pronounce it, Romy? Is that correct or no? Ro, ro, yes, Roja y Ju. Roja y Ju. Okay, yeah. yeah. That well, okay, because, okay, Enrique, stop. You're gonna go to Paraguay, and every woman you're gonna. Yeah, say yeah that. well, it's like yes, of course, I need to practice in my Guarani, so of course, yeah. And I, yeah, and I also wanted to say thank you to Whitney for 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 uh, being so thoughtful on choosing these words that are related to to the music and and even to <laughs> this weird career that I have chosen. But anyway and endomusicomusicologia and and you have such a beautiful pronunciation and everything and and thank you for researching on the on the Guarani words as well thank it's, you it's so special to be sharing with you about all these thank you well it it it's funny cuz the first thing i thought when we were presenting paraguay is guarani because i teach um a level here kind of like ap language and culture at my school. So we talk so much about indigenous populations, the languages, and Guarani has come up several times. So we we listen to news, like podcasts about it, we read articles on it. And it's really interesting to see how even in the last decade, how it's been like more visible in Paraguay. In Paraguay. Um, like I said, so it's very, it's something that's always interested me. And it's something a lot of my kids going into the classroom had no idea about. And I just feel like that's um, with um, most of our public because how would you know if you haven't been there or you're not from that area or you haven't studied um, Latin America studies. So it's just such an interesting topic to me, but thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> so Romy, thank you very much for being tonight with us. Uh, I think so that well, we can talk a lot of time about music <laughs> and your experience and enjoying the way that you're saying the things and 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 of course well because of course it's the first time that you are here in the show but of course it's not going to be the last as i said well i hope so to see you soon when you are presenting or uh, telling uh, coming here just to telling us any update about uh, your performances or any new record or something that you are doing this is your this is a forum that well you can use it to come here and just give us an update about your career and everything that you have in mind. And of course, we will do this kind of a special show about music with all the different Latin American sounds and Latin American songs. Thank you. Thank you so much. And and I will also be inviting my, my musician colleagues from Latin American countries so they can also join you guys to share about their uh, countries as well. I have friends from, lots of friends from, uh, Brazil and Colombia. I'm thinking of someone to talk about uh, Colombia soon. And so, thank thank you guys for creating such an such a an fun and and an interactive um, um, uh, environment for us to share about Latin American and hopefully um, encourage people to visit our countries. Of course, that's the, that's the main goal, and and of course, it's a deal. You will bring all your colleagues, and we will make an yeah. special about, <laughs> and and of course, enjoying all these songs and everything from different countries, different rhythms, different nice stories, different ideas. So thank you very much, Romy. It's a pleasure for us having you here, and well, it's like thank you very much for being here in the Latin America show. Thank you, Romy. Thank you very much. You. And uh, I was thinking, Enrique, something different. We can put it a song for uh, Romy singing for the end of the program? What do you think? Uh, yeah, why not? We can we can put something at the end. Yeah, of course. I think <laughs> it's a good idea. So while well, it's like, 
Well, well, let's say uh, bye bye. So, well, it's like a uh, Whitney. <laughs> Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and um, I look forward to seeing all of you next week when we discuss, I'm going to beat Enrique to the chase here, we discuss Peru, and I'm really excited because one of the guests is a good um, friend of mine, so um, get ready, we're going to talk fashion and food, and I'm really excited, and thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you very much, my dear Whitney, <laughs> and yes, of course, we will be in the next show. We are going to know more about Peru, and I think it's a fantastic place. Uh, my dear Roger Larcon. Well, this is this is, this was a fantastic show. I love it. I I know more of it Paraguay, so keep it tuned for the next week because we have good things coming. Thank you very much, Roger. And also, well, I appreciate the commentary that some people they have. I would like to say uh, hello to our friend Maria Gonzalez, that she's actually, she's from Paraguay, and all your support, because, well, uh, you put us in contact and you make this link with uh, Romy in order that we will have this fantastic opportunity and time to share with all of you, with all the audience about the uh, Paraguayan music. And, of course, I would like to say also thank you to Romy Lambda. Uh, Lamba, sorry, that is, it's nice to see you people attached to your roots, love from India. Thank you very much, Romit. And of course, well, it's, I would like to ask you to share this program with more people, as for example, Romit and all the people that they are from all the world, but they are interested in the Latin American culture, Latin American music, all the different things that we are doing over there, in, interesting people. So please share this program. Uh, share with your friends. Sometimes just click there in your on your Facebook that Wally is saying share the program in order that more people they know what are we doing. Actually, I think so that a lot of your friends maybe they would like to know, but some of them maybe they don't know that this program exists, so they can of course understand a little bit more about our culture, learn a little bit more, and of course enjoy it with our fantastic guests that we have every week. So well, it's like let's go as Roger said. Well, I said. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. And let's go to one of the songs that, well, our friend Roy Larcon, he said that he has. Thank you very much. My name is Enrique Gelista. This is the Latin America show. Over you, Roy. Thank you. <laughs> Y dientes de palo santo, la boca como un quebranto y piel de piragua azul. Lamento druta aún, su voz es como una queja. Del río trae la leyenda de algún perdido pacú. Pescador de río bravo, canoero, canoero. Nacido entre los sausales, orillitas del Paraná. De mate amargo a la lumbre del lucero hace noche sobre el agua y defiende su libertad partir, reír, jugar, soñar un cigarrito en el andar y una coplita para esperar el alba que de llegar partir, reír, jugar, soñar un cigarrito en el andar y una coplita para esperar el alba que de llegar Cabellera de betún, viviente de palo santo, la boca como un quebranto y piel de piragua azul. Lamento druta aún, su voz es como una queja del río trae la leyenda de algún perdido pacú. Pescador de río bravo, canoero, canoero, nacido entre los sausales, Cero. Hace noche sobre el agua y defiende su libertad Partir, reír, jugar, soñar un cigarrito en el andar Y una cuplita pa' esperar el alba que de llegar Partir, reír, jugar, soñar un cigarrito en el andar Y una cuplita pa' esperar el alba que de llegar
lucero y defiende su libertad partir, reír, volar, soñar un cigarrito en el andar y una coplita para esperar el alba de llegar partir, reír, volar, soñar un cigarrito en el andar y una coplita para esperar el alba de llegar